It's kind of a lazy Sunday right now, so I'm gonna give you a look into what I'm working on. This box I built, it's going to be for my 3D printer. I'm doing an enclosure for it. This is some 15 30 second uh, finished grade sandable plywood from Home Depot. And this wood on the inside is actually uh, two by four that I cut down to an inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter just to kind of give me a, a frame. I've got it all glued and screwed down. I've cut the door opening on it. And let me show you what it's for. This is actually my parts room above the garage. It's kind of a mess. But this is my Creality CR10S 3D printer. I've had it for probably two or three years. Um, and it works great. It does a really good job printing PLA. Uh, but if you're trying to print something like ABS that can withstand the heat, for instance, I made a cabin air filter that uh, works in Subarus, it goes inside the car, it can get really hot. So you need to use ABS, which is a lot trickier to work with. Um, and I have got by, this is my old enclosure. Uh, it's made of cardboard and it's actually the box that the printer came in and I hacked it up, taped it together. Uh, cut a slot for the wire to go through a little notch down there for the cables and this will this will get me by um, Or it has it has worked well in the summer months uh, But when it's cooler out and I'm trying to print even with that box What will happen is it won't hold the heat in as well and the ABS will start to warp It'll start start to peel off the bed. It doesn't even matter if I use uh, this really strong um, hairspray to try to hold it down. It just it just peels off. So I've, I've wanted to build an enclosure for a while So I'm just finally getting around to it Right here is a, a 10 by 12 piece of glass I got from Home Depot. It was like three dollars and that's what's going to be going in the front So I cut that opening out This is got to be the door. I've got to cut this out to fit the glass behind it I got one of these continuous hinges out of stainless from Home Depot. Uh, I had a gift card there. I usually shop at Lowe's, honestly, but um, I was able to find everything at Home Depot. And I'm going to cut another board out that goes underneath this that gives me kind of a, a border so that door can sit on it. And I bought some other stuff that is over here. This is some rope light kit that they sell and it's got a, a cord on it with a little switch, so I'll be able to string this along the top and I can turn on some lights or not. This is some semi-gloss black, which I'm gonna paint the outside after I fill all the screw holes. This is some um, high heat white that I'm gonna spray on the inside over the two by four area. And for the inside of the plywood, uh, I plan on lining that. I was gonna use some of the reflective uh, heat barrier material that they sell, but it, it was kind of like bubble wrap. It, it, didn't, it didn't feel very sturdy. I was gonna tack it to the walls, but I think I'm just gonna use some aluminum uh, flashing. I still have quite a bit left over from when I did the soffit on the garage, so I'm gonna use that. Um, some thumbtacks that I bought, I may try to use these to hold the lights up. I'll be able to push them into the two by four area on the top. Uh, some screws for holding the the flashing on the inside. This is a magnetic latch that they sell. So I'm gonna use this for the door to hold it secure. And this is a knob. So I'll take a, another video once it's more done, but it's, it's coming along nicely. Here I've got it all ready for paint. I filled all the holes, everything sanded, the corners are beveled. I got everything mounted already to test fit. You can see I got the screw holes and everything for the hinges. I've got this nice inner lip. I added a little piece here for the magnet thing because it was a little wider than the thickness of this plywood. I sanded the, the inside pieces as well. You can see where I had to do some cutouts. That's because uh, it would hit the 3D printer when I tried to set the box on it. And I knew I'd have to do that when I made it, I wanted to be able to build everything using one sheet of plywood, and it wasn't possible to make it any wider than it is right now. 
I got a slot cut in there for the, the filament to go through. Um, I think it'll be all right as far as like drafts and stuff going in. If I do still have problems with it, I'll try to make something out of felt to maybe help block it off or maybe like that door sweep boom material um, just to block some of the, the draft that could go through there. Got a little notch here for the wiring to tuck under and the control unit's gonna mount just right beside it or, or sit beside it on the table. Back is solid, here's the, here's the door. I had to fill some imperfections in with the plywood. You can see where I took a router and I cut an area out for the, the glass to go in. Got the hole for the knob. So the plywood, I, I've sanded it all the way down to 120 and just the nature of plywood, you can see that there's some imperfections and stuff in it and even, even where there's, there's not something as noticeable as that, the surface still isn't smooth. There's, there's little valleys and stuff and it's gotta be painted with a semi-gloss black and I want it to be as smooth as possible. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some of this primer, one, two, three bullseye primer, and I'm gonna do probably two coats of it. And then after that, I'm gonna skim coat it with some all-purpose mud for drywall. And when I say skim coat, I mean I'll just put some on and then I'll, I'll scrape it completely off uh, with this putty knife and I'll just press on it and it'll go like that and then any of these grooves that are kind of microscopic the mud should stick in there and then I'll go over it with drywall primer and then I'll be ready for the the paint and this is all stuff that I have left over from when I did my garage I used that one two three primer on the plywood that's on the lower half of the wall and the reason I'm not just applying the mud to the to the plywood itself, I've seen people do that, is this plywood is just glued together. It's, it's multiple little layers. And I've, I've read reviews on, on some people saying if they put the paint on too thick or it's too wet, it'll cause some separation and you'll get delamination. And I don't wanna risk that with the, with the mud. I think it's, it's gotta stay wetter with the mud on it than if it was just primer. And I've used this primer on wood before so I know this works, so I'm gonna stick with what I know. And I think that'll seal it off so that when I apply the mud, the mud's not gonna soak through the primer and get into the wood and risk any warping or delaminating. So my box is all painted. I'm happy with the way that it came out. After putting on the mud and sanding it flat, that helped get rid of some of the grain. I did two coats of drywall primer and I did four coats of the semi-gloss black Rust-Oleum. And this covered fairly well. After the first coat, you could see a lot of white, but the second one, it was mostly covered. It was good to go after the third, um, but I did a fourth coat anyways, just to help hide some of the grain um, a little better. You can see it's not, it's not perfect. Uh, let me get it to focus. If you look closely, you can kind of see some of the grain lines, um, but it's, it's good enough for what it is and what I've got invested in it. Here's the, the door, the knob's on, the hinge is there. It takes some force to open with this magnet. And the glass is held in where I, I routed out this channel. And then this is just some strip of, of wood there that kitty corners, all of them. And all of the screws that I had were too long. Uh, so I'd start the screw and then I'd pull it out and then I'd shorten the tip of it with that belt sander. Uh, the inside I've got the aluminum flashing uh, all up and those are actually thumbtacks that are put in there. They, they seem to work well. They, I didn't have to to cut the tip off them or anything. They're a good size good size length. Um, getting them started was was tricky at first and then I realized uh, I made this little tool I guess. It's just a piece of wood um, with a slot cut in the end of it. And I could put the thumbtack in there and I could kind of hold it where it needs to be and I could tap it with a hammer to get it started and then I could just slide it out of the way and, and finish hitting it in. And that, that seemed to 
work really good and, and save my fingers from being hit. Uh, there's the light. The LED strip goes up. It goes over. I don't know if you can see this very well, but it goes around the front of the box. And then it continues over on the other side. And right in these, right in those corners, it kind of had to span a gap. Um, so I added some more plastic things around it just, just to secure it better. It is 3M tape on the back side. And if I turn the light on, it does a really nice job lighting up. So I'm happy with the way it came out. Uh, it should work well. I'm still waiting on a few more things before I can test it. Uh, mainly some extension cables for the 3D printer. Um, right now the control box would have to be way in the back because everything has to go through this opening and it'd have to be completely pressed against this and I wouldn't be able to print anything too high because as it goes up the, the cable would get shorter. Um, not to mention the, the spool for the filament goes on top of the control box and I would want to hit the side. So I've got some extension cables so I can move my control box um, farther away. And I also have a temperature gauge coming that I may mount right here or maybe I'll put it on top. So my printer's all up, it's working right now. I'm actually printing a cabin air filter bracket for a Subaru, something I designed a while ago. And it's using ABS and I've got hairspray sprayed onto the glass and I can see everything crystal clear. This, this glass is perfectly clear. The lights do a really good job lighting everything up. Uh, when I use my cardboard box, I'd have to kind of lift the flap and shine a flashlight in there and, and try to peek at it. And it was dangerous to do because ABS is very sensitive. If you get like a draft that goes through there, it can, it can curl your print. Um, just to show you what I mean, here's, here's a, a cabin filter bracket that's messed up, it's, it's curled, and then this is a good one, it's nice and flat. So right now it's 77.8 degrees inside the box. I know it says outside temp here, but that's really the inside temp for the box because these wires, one's for humidity, one's for temp, are meant to go outside and this is meant to go inside, uh, but I wanna be able to control it out here. So those sensors are inside the box. So it's about 78 inside the box, and if I flip it, it's 57.6 degrees in the room I'm in right now. I did have to make a few changes uh, to the box, mostly along this bottom edge uh, is, is plywood, and I didn't want the plywood to come all the way down to the table. So when I made it and I had that wood frame inside, I, I took the wood frame and I made that sit just about a sixteenth of an inch lower, just because this edge of plywood would be um, likely to chip if it rubbed on anything. And when I did that, you can see I've got the cutout on the left and the cutout on the right. When I did that, it meant that there's an area in that cutout where this plywood um, went down and is about a sixteenth inch off from the surface you're putting it on, but there's no wood backer behind there because it's cut out. So I had to add a little piece of foam underneath the plywood edge to kind of fill that gap. Then if we look over here, I added this mount on the side of the box and that's got uh, some felt that's stapled to the back of it with a slip cut in it. And that's just to help some of the heat from escaping. Um, it also makes it so that the filament is gonna rub on the felt versus um, the wood. I don't have the extension cables in yet, um, but they did, they did come. Maybe I'll put them in next week. Um, you can see that right now it has to be really close uh, to the box, but that'll change once those come in. Uh, overall, I'm very happy with the way it came out. It seems to be doing a really good job. Uh, looks, looks more professional than what I had. Um, I'm probably going to tidy up those, those wires and maybe mount this on the front. Or I'm thinking I may just put it right here. Um, that way, all the control stuff is, is in one spot. Uh, but that's it. Um, it does work well. I printed this on it earlier today, and I've got another one printing uh, right now. If there's any questions, just let me know.